Unmanned aircraft systems, aka drones, have been around for some time and are rapidly increasing in popularity and numbers. Reflecting popularity among consumers and hobbyists and increased use by owners and operators of critical infrastructure. There is real concern about drones and their potential use for terrorism, mass casualty incidents, interference with air traffic, as well as corporate espionage and invasions of privacy. We're not being paranoid. Just look at the short amount of time it took for aircraft to become weapons. Less than 10 years after the Wright brothers' first flight, a person flew a plane and dropped a brick on someone's head. That was followed with pistols, long guns, machine guns, leading to the era of dogfights. Soon after that, limited precision bombs and missiles evolved. It's not hard to imagine UAS following a similar path. Technology, though, is really changing how rapidly we have to adapt. People used to ask me, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night is the speed of change. The nation's critical infrastructure provides the essential services that underpin American society and serve as the backbone of our nation's economy, security, and health. We know it is the energy we use in our homes and businesses, the water we rely on, the transportation that moves us, and the goods we use, the stores we shop in, and the communication systems we rely on to stay in touch with friends, family, and to run our businesses. For the critical infrastructure part, the threat is that people can surveil in ways they never could before because physical security, if you look anywhere, it's always about badges, locked doors, and fences, barbed wire fences, because it's not three-dimensional security, it's, it's two. So now people that have critical infrastructure now have to think that people can come in from the third dimension, the aerial side. So now a fence is not going to keep people out necessarily. An aircraft's easy to track and we can hear an aircraft and see it and then go to the airport and investigate the pilots. Uh, but a drone you can just put right back in your car and just drive away. Now drones can take uh, great high definition video and they can also scan with various sensors, infrared, um, LIDAR, and get a very accurate detailed picture of uh, a landscape and take that into a computer and then uh, build it up from the ground into an animation and it's almost like that you were there. Um, very, very uh, precise. The potential for drone attacks against just one of our critical infrastructures can affect structures that have interdependencies. If a UAS incident occurred at a power grid near a critical water facility, it could impact those operations, even though it was not directed at them. You know, we'll be uh, not only handling our regularly weekly season games uh, at stadiums all at 30 one stadiums all across the United States, and drones present a huge challenge to us every single game. We have put some plans in place, we have some mitigation strategies, but we don't have all the answers yet. With increased use of unmanned aircraft systems and recognition that there will be negative uses that may present a threat to critical infrastructure, there is increased interest in research and development of counter UAS technologies. These technologies are complex and need to take into account the potential consequences of neutralizing or disabling a UAS. While this technology is advancing, it is not yet widely available. Potential threats associated with unmanned aircraft systems are expected to continue to expand in nature and increase in volume in the coming years. Because of their physical and operational characteristics, UAS can often evade detection and create challenges for the critical infrastructure community. There are a multitude of companies that will knock on your door and say, we have drone detection capability, we have drone mitigation capability, we can detect, intercept, and take down a drone. If you don't know what the laws are and regulations are on the books, most of those technologies that I have seen are in violation of one of those laws or regulations. There are some laws and regulations that impact what you can and can't do in terms of drone interception mitigation. So it, it is something you definitely need to be aware of, but you've got to do your homework. There's a drone detection technology, and um, that's not illegal to use, but you should be careful and mindful as that you're not purchasing a piece of equipment that can also mitigate uh, drones and that um, could be considered a jammer or some kind of electronic interference. When a drone is brought down, stay away from it. 
treat it as evidence, and don't allow staff to handle the drone. There will be a lot of forensic evidence, both physical and cyber, that can be extracted. You have to understand that this is digital evidence. Uh, and there, there's procedures for how you handle digital evidence, and there's procedures and laws, case law, on how you can and what you can access. So a drone is no different. This is somebody else's computer, maybe a bad actor, maybe somebody who's violated the law, maybe just a hobbyist that has some right to privacy. That drone contains information that could tell you whose drone it is. So the way you handle that evidence when you come in contact with it is just like you would handle any other digital evidence. Um, if you don't handle it properly, all that evidence can be lost. Uh, you need to have first understanding, educate yourself and your people. Two, you have to have policy that's written, and you have to train people how to deal with this. So while you can't do everything, you can do a lot, but you have to take the time to do it right. Key to successfully managing potential security incidences associated with UAS is first, recognizing and then implementing an emergency response plan that meets federal, state, and local regulatory requirements. There are several measures that can be taken to address UAS-related security challenges. Research and implement legally approved counter UAS technology. Know the air domain around the facility and who has authority to take action to enhance security. Contact the FAA to consider UAS restrictions in close proximity to fixed site facilities. Update emergency incident action plans to include UAS security and response strategies. Build federal, state, and local partnerships for adaptation of best practices and information sharing. Train your employees that if they see something, say something. And report potential UAS threats to your local law enforcement agency. Now the planners, the emergency planners, the physical security planners, and the management need to think, what would we do if one of these were sighted over the facility? Now, there would be points of contact that would be alerted. What would the emergency response plan be? And just like a fire drill or an evacuation drill, these things should be incorporated into the plan and a standing plan that all employees are aware of, and then run a drill. You don't have to have a flying object to run a drill any more than you have to have a fire to have a fire drill. So simulate a flyover event for critical infrastructure and then have a call chain or a sequence of events mapped out in the plan and figure out which authorities need to be contacted to respond. The most effective stadiums are following best practice policies. So, you know, the league uh, ensures that we get those t uh, flight restrictions uh, in place, uh, and then it's up to the stadium security directors to have the proper policy and procedures to make sure that, that one, we effectively deal with drones if they enter into our, our game space, and two, that if we do intercept a drone in any way, that they handle it properly so that we don't lose evidence. And when you're talking about a stadium environment, you're talking 1,300 to 1,500 employees working in a stadium doing security customer service that have lots of opportunities to see something that looks out of place. So, uh, you know, you have to communicate clearly to those employees. What do I do if I see a drone? What, what's the policy here? What am I supposed to do? Who do I tell? All of that has to be communicated to your employees. We do a, a quick briefing before the beginning of every game with all the officials and with all of the sideline folks and say, look, if a drone enters the, the airspace, here's the procedure. This is what we need you to do. I hope this information will be helpful as you begin the process of developing an emergency action plan. Remember, the time to plan your response to a potential UAS incident is now, before an incident occurs. <laughs>